Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome children to your Sira time, your story time. And today we are going to go to the next major event of Sira, which is when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam decided to leave Mecca upon the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's find out. Leaving Mecca was not going to be easy. If the news would spread, the Quraysh would crack down on the new Meccan Muslims. So a low profile was kept and migrations took place secretly. Some people were caught and harmed, like Abu Salama radiallahu anhu's family. Suhaib ar-Rumi radiallahu anhu was another well-to-do businessman who was caught from escaping. He decided to make a deal that he would give up all his wealth and tell the Makkans where all his hidden valuables were if they would let him go. So to this the Quraysh agreed quite greedily. People had to sacrifice their most dearest things in order to migrate. This migration for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure was truly an extremely rewarding decision that the Sahabas and the Sahabias made. May Allah be pleased with all of them. Now since the Makkan council had made the evil decision of assassinating Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam collectively, things were moving fast. Jibreel alayhi salam was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the plot of the Makkans was told to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Quran says in Surah Anfal, verse number 30, وَإِذْ يَمْكُرُ بِكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِيُسْبِتُوكَ أَوْ يَقْتُلُوكَ أَوْ يُخْرِجُوكَ وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ Remember how the unbelievers plotted against you to imprison you, to kill you, or to exile you from Makkah. They plot and plan, but Allah plans too, and the best of planners is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam immediately left for Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu's house to tell him about the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how they were to leave Makkah now. Aisha radiallahu anha, the daughter of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, remembered the time when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command and everyone was alert and cooperative and ready to help Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in any way they could. Asma radiallahu anha, the older daughter of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, prepared some edibles for the journey of her father with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The night time drew near and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in his home with Ali radiallahu anhu. He asked Ali radiallahu anhu to lie down in his bed and take over the sheets of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Usually Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would wake up before Fajr for his tahajjud salah and go out to the Kaaba. But this day, he remained inside the house, trusting Allah to find a way for him to follow the command. On the other hand, let's see what the Makkans were doing outside Prophet Muhammad Wasallam's home. The Makkans were 11 in number, with youths holding their swords surrounding the outside of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's home, waiting for him to come out at pre-dawn. The people stationed near the door were watching that no one would leave the house. They peeped in through the cracks and saw someone sound asleep in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's bed. They assumed him to be the Prophet, not knowing that it was Ali radiallahu anhu. 
Outside, Abu Jahl walked about proudly, so sure that he was going to end everything and win his way. Despite this blockade that they had laid, Prophet Muhammad came out of his house, casting a handful of sand between him and the outsiders, which, with the will of Allah, created a visual barrier and no one could see Prophet Muhammad leave. In the Quran, in Surah Yasin, verse number 9, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلْنَا مِن بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدًّا وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ سَدًّا فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُبَصِرُونَ I have placed a barrier in front of them and a barrier behind them. I have covered them so that they cannot see. In the morning, when Ali radiallahu anhu arose from the bed of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Quraysh got hold of him, they inquired about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as they had been tricked. Ali radiallahu anhu did not answer to their satisfaction. So he was taken away and beaten up. Even Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu's house was raided and Asma radiallahu anha was slapped hard for not telling the Quraysh about the whereabouts. Back at the scene of the miracle, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam had walked over to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu's house in the night when he left his own house. He went to his dearest friend's house who was most eagerly waiting for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Together they walked towards an opposite direction, an opposite direction of Yasrib. This was a smart decision that they made, taking another route so no one would suspect this way. After a tough five-mile walk, they reached high up a rocky mountainous place. This was steep slope with stones and rocks all the way and you can imagine them in the middle of the night how everything would have looked dark, rocky and difficult to walk and they were climbing this steep mountain. Isn't that amazing? As they walked up, a cave of Sor was selected by them called the Ghari Sor. They decided to take refuge in this cave and rest in it. This looked like boulders had been placed next to one another in a way that a narrow crevice ran parallel to the ground. This opening was tight and it didn't look like a cave opening though it was. So the two dear friends with their skillful movements got into this dark chamber. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu got inside after checking out for any poisonous animals at large. He stuffed the holes in the walls, trying to block the way of any dangerous openings, till he ran out of all stuffing. He asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to come in and rest. As Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu sat against the wall, he asked Prophet ﷺ to lie in a way that he could keep his head in his laps. So he, Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, would sleep comfortably. Meanwhile, Abu Bakr anhu extended his toe into a close-by opening as a precaution to protect Muhammad ﷺ against any poisonous animal should it come through. After some time, as they settled themselves hiding in, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu suddenly felt something sting his toe. It was a deep sting. And any normal person would have really flinked his, his toe off. But 
Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu kept his toe in and took all the pain. Tears came into his eyes and one rolled down to his face and then fell on to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's face. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam immediately woke up and quickly tried to help his friend. He looked at where the problem was and applied his miraculous saliva which cured Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu immediately. This night, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu's action was so rewarding and pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his kindness, his support, his friendship and immense love he carried for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed his high iman, mashallah. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Bless our hearts with strong iman too and so much love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen. Till next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.